Boys and girls, I'm Nick in the States, and right here, right now, we have the Harley Benton DC Junior. Might be called something else. I'll put a label down below, but really, it's a DC Junior. It's their take on a Gibson Les Paul Double Cut Junior, which came out around 58. Um, single P90, badass knockoff bridge. It's not a swear, it's a Leo Quam badass copy. Single volume, single tone, no flip switch because there's one pickup. Cool little pick guard. Uh, mahogany body, mahogany neck, uh, some sort of wannabe rosewood fretboard. It looks a lot like rosewood. Like a lot like rosewood. But it's not rosewood, it's something else. Sure. Um, vintage style, 3x3 three three white bobbined tuners. Um, and Harley Benson's. Cool headstock, new logo, new logo. I've been gone for a while. It's been a new logo for over a year. But take a look at that. That's really, really cool. Now, I bought this about a year ago. It's been sitting around the house. It's gotten a little bit of play, but really not, not as much as I would have hoped. And that's just because life is busy. But it's a substantial feeling, very nice TV yellow. Now, why is it called TV yellow? Um, because in the 50s, when everything was black and white and these huge Klieg lights that would light the stages, white would disappear on the stage. It just would become this fuzzy blur. And they realized if they did it in yellow and the flick to black and white, it would more like white on screen, on TV. It would show up that way. It wouldn't just disappear and wash out. And so that's why TV yellow came to be. And this is a pretty good rendition of TV yellow. When I first got it, I thought it was a little too mustardy, and then I have a TV yellow melody maker, and I put it next to it and went, oh, in fact, this isn't so bad at all. So, anyway, cool guitar. Fit and finish, because it is a Benton. Let's, uh, let's go over some of the little details before we go too crazy on everything else. Overall, paint quality, as I look over this, I cannot find a single paint issue in the masking, in the binding, and the headstock, the logo, the edges, I mean, it is a really, really well-built guitar. And there's definitely some interest. I ran a poll on YouTube for which guitar to look at next, and this one won pretty soundly in the early voting, and then it kind of leveled out a little bit between this and the HP42 signature guitar, which we will do next week. Oh, next one's dead. But old quality, quite impressive. The pickup, I really like. I think it's a, it's a very nice, comfortable playing. The neck is your slim import neck. It's not a 50s baseball bat like a Gibson. Feels like pretty much every Epiphone neck that you pick up and play. It's a very similar feel to that. With a little bit, though, I'll give it credit, the edge of the fretboard, the top edge, as your hand rolls over, is actually rolled or at least softened ever so slightly. So it's still... Very much a D versus a C, but the edge of that thing is rolled over nicely, so it feels really good. Now, I've had this guitar for a year, as I say. It sat on the wall for about six of those months, and there's not a single fret bite everywhere up and down the neck. It feels very, very good. In fact, I just had to give it a little truss rod adjustment before this, just to, not that the action was just a little bit higher. So just the truss rod, and voila, we are here, we are playing. And it's good, and it could even come down a little bit more, and there's room on the bridge if I look at the height of it. The bridge is pretty low, but there's even more that I can bring it down if I wanted to slam the action even more. One other thing I want to point out is this, the, the key thing is a badass bridge copy. Why this is better, traditionally back in the day, like in the photo here, Gibson would put a wraparound tailpiece here, and it had no adjustment other than sliding the, pick, the whole tailpiece back and forth. Now in this case what you have is individual adjustments for every one of these saddles to bring them forward and back and set intonation. 
And that way, you're always in tune even as you go up the neck. It's just a ton more flexibility than the old school setup that Gibson had back in the day. And uh, as I said earlier, Leo Kwan was the first company to come out with the badass bridge. And uh, it's really a great thing for kind of maintaining intonation and keeping a guitar properly in tune all the way up the neck. Overall though, very, very cool, very neat guitar and excellent for the money. Put the price down below. But when I got it, I was very surprised at how inexpensive this is. From a substance perspective, it's eight pounds ish. So not a lightweight, but not a backbreaker. It just feels like a substantial piece. I really like this guitar a lot. It's only real negative to me is the Les Paul double cut body is really a shallower, smaller footprint body. So when you pick it up and play it, it sometimes feels a little small, like you're playing a fiddle. For a point of reference, here is a gold top Les Paul copy. And what you can see when you go between the two is, the Les Paul is just a bigger, more substantial thing in every dimension. And it just can sometimes make this feel small. But it's fun. Guitars like this, I think you've seen, uh, Billy Joe is probably the most famous one playing a guitar very much like it is, that now go for $1,800, $2,000 used on like eBay and Reverb, whereas this is a tenth of the price. Not to say it's equal to the guitar, but this is a really good playing, substantial guitar. The Roswell pickup in it I think is great. It's not the growliest, highest output P90. And let me know in the comments, if you guys are interested, what I can do too is I'll do a second video and I can compare this to a real deal 68 Gibson SG Junior. Same amount of wood, basically, with a real deal original Gibson one, and we can kind of do an A-B tone test back and forth. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. Comment down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the little belly thing. More videos on the regular, at least a couple times a week, hopefully a few times a week, as we, uh, we all have some free time. Let's, uh, let's rip through some tones, shall we? As always, we're going from guitar into a Kemper, and fill the patches that I kind of cycle through on the floor. Uh, from the Kemper into a Behringer Euphoria, which I really like. This is the UMC 404 HD. From there into Logic on my Mac. That's it. Nice and simple. <laughs> kind of fun little... Uh... Jangly bridge single coil pickup kind of tones. If I roll the tone off just a little bit, it kind of has a little more necky. I drop a little bit more volume, but give it a little bit more output in the amp. it still gives you some bridgey tones. But then when you want to get evil, so that way you just roll off volume, roll off tone when you're playing in clean sections, and when you got a solo or go nutty, just crank them up in the same set. Of right? And it gets that growly. Gated the hell out of it, you could get away with really like higher gain stuff. But the problem is, is these are single coil pickups, and with a single coil pickup, singular, not these, this, this one little guy right here, is a single coil pickup, and it means that it's susceptible for picking up hum from lights and things like that. So you're gonna hear a buzz. So when I kick into high gain, which you would think a growly little bridge pickup like this would be great for, you're gonna hear some amplified fuzziness. Hear that? That's not broken, it's just single coils, but...
nice little ripper though. This is, they're just fun guitars. It's not really your do everything, but it's a great thing to pick it up and just mix up with what you normally play, whether you're a Strat guy or a Les Paul guy, a 335 guy, a Tele guy, whatever. This one you plug in, kind of usually grabs your tone or whatever it is and pushes it in one direction or another, and you find yourself just kind of going down alleyways of cool playing and it's inspiring. And, and that's one thing that as we look at different types of guitars, right? Rationally speaking, a Les Paul or a Strat or a Tele is really all you ever need to play guitar. It's, it's, that's kind of your, Rationally speaking, if you think about it, a single Les Paul or a Strat or a Tele, maybe the three of them, who knows, it's really all you ever need as a player, right? Plug that in with modern technology and modern EQs and things, you can get almost every possible tone out of one of those guitars. But what you forget about that is when you pick up something like this, it's a different formula. It's growlier. It's single pickup. It makes you work a little harder. What happens sometimes is it's inspiring and you find new ways and new things to play out of it. Now, overall, it's not the most capable guitar, but you see people like Keith Urban and Billy Joe, as we said before, and other guys, Leslie West, Mountain, all these things, play juniors or one variety or another and get a tremendous amount of soul and tone out of them in certain genres of music. And I think that's really the key is, it's finding the match of what you want to play, what the guitar wants to give you, maybe the amp and everything you've got going on there and a little bit of talent, and and there you go, there you have it. So overall though, fit and finish, out of the box experience. I've done nothing to this other than adjust the truss rod after close to a year of ownership. Um, it rips, it's not the highest output growliest P90. And so I'm interested to see, if you guys wanna see it, having an AB against the SG to see really like the difference between the two and maybe get a little bit more tones out of this guy. But I wanted to get this video out today, show you guys this bad boy. Uh, there's a link down below to Toman. You can take a look at it. I do do link referral. If you buy something from there, I get a little bit. Just truth and stuff. With that said, I paid for the guitar with my own money, full price. Paid to get it shipped here. That's what it is. Just to be honest and open. A lot of people have had questions still about shipping Harley Bentons, and I know they've gotten more popular in the U.S. because like Hunter over at Agafish, um, I've seen him on Steve from Boston's channel. I've seen him on uh, Shane from In The Blues. Everyone's been getting these and, and Toman's been doing an awesome job of kind of sending them out and getting people to help get the word out. My experience in shipping to the States is uh, if it isn't around Christmas time, I usually get it here somewhere between two and three weeks. Costs 30 euro, which is or maybe 32 euro now. Uh, so figure 35 to 40 dollars to ship one or the same 35 or 40 to ship three guitars at the same time to the US. Get a buddy or two, go in get your shipping costs down. They ship DHL, and then DHL usually will hand off to US Postal Service for local delivery. If you're in a city, DHL sometimes brings it right to you. At my office, DHL does it. At my house, it ends up being USPS. So as I said, two to three weeks, it's coming Christmas time. It may take a little longer, but they get the things out really, really well. And so that's my experience. One more caveat, and I it, because you're dealing with an overseas vendor, it costs you more than 30 bucks to ship it back. So if you have an issue, the most likely remedy they're gonna give you is some sort of credit to offset a portion of the guitar. And this is just because it's gonna cost you 100 bucks to send the guitar back to Germany, maybe more. And so they really wanna make something work that way. It does mean that some people get really upset and unhappy when something's wrong and they can't make good on it, and it becomes an issue. So I wanna make sure that everybody's aware when buying a Harley Benton from overseas like I am, there's uh, there can be some challenges. In Europe, it seems like the easiest return policy ever. And so that's super, super cool for you guys, but I just wanna make sure that people know because I've been in forums where people go on absolute tirades because a tuner was crooked and they couldn't somehow send the guitar back. Real problems, everyone's mileage may vary, but I think at this price range, there's a little bit of risk to get a whole lot of reward in most cases. I've had, I've tried to figure out, this might be with the two other ones that I have here that you haven't seen on the channel the 30th Harley Benton that's gone through my hands. Um, and I've had probably two duds in 30. For guitars that cost under $300, almost all of them with one exception, you're never gonna get that. <laughs> you really aren't. So my experience, your mileage may vary, but I wanna just share that knowledge because I, I have touched a lot of these and especially in the States, Australia, other parts of the world, this is a sight unseen purchase. You haven't walked into a music store and played one of these. So wanted to share that piece of information. With that, I've probably talked too much and played too little, but I'm Nick in the States. I've got more gear than talent. I've got a lot of issues. I'm happy to be here sharing them with you. Take care.
duck the clog with Roger for oil change. What bird popcorn? Toad with yesterday's trend. Crab cake, squirrel cake, zipper was not cool to eat for lunch at midnight. Party cookie fart sandwich. Sludge fart lady hawk hotness. What carpet bathing suit? Party store fart menu. Cooper Route 9 Wi Fi. Poof! <laughs> <laughs>